Public Beta 19 for DaVinci Resolve is out now, so we're gonna hit a few of the highlights and make sure you know where to go to get all of the rest of the info. Now I'm here on the main support page for Blackmagic Design, and if I scroll down, you will see DaVinci Resolve 19 Public Beta 3 um, for the free version as well as the paid studio version. Now I've mentioned this before, uh, but if you click on these read more settings, the update notes you will see here will be what's new in DaVinci Resolve 19, not 19 Beta 3. For that, you'll want to head over to the forum. Um, you can go ahead and start downloading on that other page if you want, but if you head to the forum in the DaVinci Resolve section, you will see a under the announcements a post for DaVinci Resolve Public Beta 3. And here you'll have the specific notes for this small incremental upgrade. Now, this isn't you know a giant upgrade with a lot of new features. If you scroll down, you'll see that the majority of these are them addressing issues or bugs that have come up since uh, Resolve 19 launched. A link to this forum post will be in the description, but there are just a few things I want to hit that I think are, you know, a little bit more of a big deal. Um, right at the top is support for HDR viewers on Windows. For HDR work or a lot of like slightly more pro workflows, um, for a long time Resolve has wanted you to connect to an external, you know, sort of pro display. And for something like HDR, that functionality was limited when using the actual internal, you know, graphic user interface in Resolve on Windows. And boom, it looks like this is added. This is a surprisingly big feature. And right underneath that, we have 50% faster playback when using a higher quality ultra NR, so ultra, ultra noise reduction there. Other especially notable updates I want to point out are this option where clicking transcription without selected media invokes it for the current timeline. This is pretty cool. If you have an open timeline working and you click that transcription button, it will transcribe your open timeline. And this is especially useful for, you know, quickly uh, maybe searching by content in a long video. If you have a long interview, edited it, but you want to jump to a specific point where, you know, a specific topic is mentioned, you pull up transcription, search for that word, it will find its exact location in your timeline. Pretty cool. Another really cool update is the ability to apply per clip music remixer effects from the inspector. A lot of the cooler AI audio tools we got in 19 were limited to track only, one of them being music remixers. You had to apply this to an entire track Maybe you're having one track for all of your music through a video, but just on one of those songs, you want to use Music Remixer to like remove vocals. Now you can do that all in one track with that uh, effect only uh, applying to one specific uh, audio clip. And then another cool little update, uh, the DaVinci uh, Remote Monitor app. Uh, this is a cool feature that I believe was first added in 18.5. It allows for remote monitoring. So when you're editing in Resolve, you can have either a client somewhere else log into this remote monitor app and you know follow along as you edit or you use it for a review. Or I've seen it, some people log into this either on their phone or something like an iPad to monitor content that they're editing for vertical or short form delivery so they can see it actually like on their phone as they're editing in Resolve. It's a pretty cool workflow. And now we have an additional option for that web login to make that entire process a little smoother to get up and running. Of course, as you can see, we have lots of other updates as well. We have a number of updates for the replay system, which I still haven't dove into. I'm not sure when I will get to that. And then, you know, a handful of uh, bug fixes as well. If you have run into a specific bug in 19, go ahead and check to see if it's addressed here or, you know, grab the update and, and see that way. That's some of the new cool stuff in this update, but don't miss all of the cool stuff that's been in Resolve for a while, like the ability to make your own custom transition. If you're interested in that, my last video was walking through how to make this really cool slot machine inspired uh, transition. I really like that one. It's a little more of just like a straightforward tutorial. So if you're interested in that, don't miss that link in the description as well, or maybe I'll put it on screen. We'll see how that goes. If you've got any specific thoughts on this update, of course, let me know in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.